thank you for joining the Panda Patch Management demo. This is a new module that Panda released quite recently, and I'm going to explain what it's all about. So first of all, why patch management? I'll cover off uh, why we decided to release patch management at this point, at this stage. Why is it prevalent? Why is it important? Um, then a little bit on the challenges for IT administrators. Obviously, patching has been a thing pretty much since day dot. So what sort of challenges are we seeing in today's landscape? Then I'll give you a demonstration of the solution, so a practical live demonstration. And then lastly, we'll give you the implementation. How do you make use of this? And then we'll come back to the Q&A. So first of all, why patch management? Why did Panda release patch management now? Why is it so important? Uh, why is it more prevalent now than ever? One of the main reasons is malware is not as much of a problem. So um, this is kind of a bold statement for, for us to say, but earlier on this year, Panda Security publicly announced that for our Adaptive Defense 360 customers, malware is no longer a problem. If you look at where we are now, as far as malware is concerned, compare that back to maybe you know, 10, even just five years ago, the landscape has dramatically changed. Even, even within Panda Security uh, as a business, we see a far, far, far dramatically fewer uh, malware instances. And this is as a result of the EDR technology. But the point is, is that malware has become a harder infection vector, a harder, um, you know, uh, less attractive for cyber attackers to, to leverage. So obviously that doesn't mean that we've won. That doesn't mean that the war is over. It just means that things have evolved and that cyber attackers will be taking on different infection vectors and different techniques. And yes, what we're seeing as a trend is that uh, vulnerabilities in programs uh, or, or exploits is becoming more popular. Um, in fact, in the last year, we saw 38% more vulnerabilities in applications than we have done in the last five years. So you can see here that this really is the cause and effect of us doing such a good job at mitigating malware that the cyber attackers turn their attention to the weakest link. Um, there was a study done last year by Gartner that stipulated that of all the successful cyber attacks from within 2017, 80% of them would have been prevented if everybody had kept their software and their patching all up to date. So in other words, you can reduce your attack surface, the likelihood of you being a, the victim of a successful attack by 80% just by keeping all of your software up to date. And of the 80%, 86% of the flaws were found in third party applications. So contrary to, to what many may believe, it isn't really just the operating system that we need to be worried about. It's not just the Microsoft patches. It is all of the other software that we're putting onto our systems to use them for a daily, um, daily activities. And this comes with challenges for IT administrators. Um, it, times have moved on and people need more devices, they need more software. Um, the software itself, the vendors are releasing more frequent uh, versions and updates, development cycles are a lot shorter. And this all converges into actually quite a big problem for administrators. Um, combine that with the fact that mobile devices, devices, you know, laptops, a lot of people are working remotely. A lot of people are no longer in a ring-fenced, controlled um, office network environment where the administrator's got absolute control. So all of these things together make it very difficult for IT admins to actually um, fulfill the basic requirement of making sure that every single operating system is on the latest software, every single uh, web browser is up to date, all of the plugins for that, um, you know, and any other software that's installed are all running the most recent versions. So this is why uh, Panda essentially released uh, patch management now is because it's become a poignant um, part of anybody's security posture to make sure that all of these things are up to date since this is, seems to be where the target um, for cyber attackers has gone. So I'm going to show you a quick demo of the solution, take you through how it all works. So the patch management solution 
is very familiar to anybody who's already got the Ether platform. If you haven't already got the Ether platform, this is the new console that everybody who uses our endpoint solutions will be moving to. So if you're endpoint protection, endpoint protection plus, adaptive defense or adaptive defense 360, you will get this version of the console soon. It's a project that we've got. But this is the general look and feel across all those solutions and patch management's no different. At the top here, you can see the health status. So is it enabled correctly or are there any errors, etc.? Over here, there's a widget showing you the last time devices were checked. And then we've got end of life programs, which brings me on to an important point. The patch management does cater for third party applications. So we're not just looking at Windows devices. And with this widget, we can actually see a depiction of those third party applications which are no longer supported by the vendor in which um, they were publicized. So here, this red one obviously being the most pertinent, um, currently in end of life, meaning that the vendor has essentially abandoned that version. It's no longer being supported by the vendor. In end of life, meaning that it will become end of life at, at least within the next year, and with a known end of life date, meaning that we essentially know when this is gonna become an end of life um, solution. Down the next widget, we have uh, available patches. So this gives you a breakdown of your patching and what the current status is across your state of machines. So we have uh, security patches broken down into a different criticality. We have other patches and service packs. Service packs does include the Microsoft feature updates. So that has been confirmed. Just below that, we've got the ability to view all of the patches. So this is every patch that's outstanding, third party or Microsoft. And then we've got some history on, on more recent uh, installation tasks that's been performed, the ability to view those installation tasks or view the his installation history. So what if we wanted to just bring all of our patching up to date? We want all the software to be brought up to speed. We want all of the Microsoft patching to be up to date so that we can close that gap and uh, reduce our attack surface. It's very straightforward. In fact, it's incredibly easy with patch management. Bearing in mind that this is a cloud console and on the Ether platform, it's now real time. So <clears throat> to, to keep our software up to date, uh, it doesn't really matter where the devices are, so long as they have an internet connection, they don't have to come back home, they don't have to come to the, the resident network. We just click view all available patches. And here we have a list of all of the patches for all of the devices that we have, which are outstanding and available. Now, if we just wanted to select all of them and push them out immediately, then we can do that like so. Check this box, select all the devices, install immediately by clicking install. There is an option to schedule for the future as well, but I'll just show you installing immediately. That will subsequently create the relevant tasks in the tasks pane. And if we go here, we can see that it's broken down by each individual device. It tells us how many patches need to be installed for each subsequent device to bring them all up to speed. That is an immediate task, so it would immediately, within literally two or three seconds, start running the patching process on any device that is available uh, and connected to the internet. We could view the results of those patches in real time as well. So we can see the status, obviously this one is pending, um, but if we look at another one, um, we can see when they finished and where they're pending and the target devices and when the end date and start date was. We can also filter on this view as well if this gets a bit full up, if we have a lot of devices. We can also uh, view uninstalled patches, which brings me on to another point. We have the capability with patch management not only to deploy patching in real time, but also to roll back patches should we need to. So if we look at the installation history, we can see all of the patches that have been installed historically, and we may decide that we want to uninstall a particular patch. So if we choose uh, one of these, you can see the option here it gives us lots of information about the patch and the, the program that was installed or the patch that was installed. There's a full description, size of the patch, and the relevant identification numbers that we might want. Here we can uninstall the patch by selecting uninstall, and it gives us the option to uninstall from a single device that we've targeted, or whether we want to roll it back for all of the devices across the board. Now there's a couple of things that we have to bear in mind, and that's that uh, whether a patch can be rolled back or not is actually determined by the vendor that provides the patch. 
So in some instances, you may find a situation where the patch cannot be rolled back. I'll try to find an example. This is what it would look like. And as you can see, non-uninstallable patch is highlighted here. And it says that the software vendor determined the patch is not uninstallable. So it will determine on whether the vendor wants the patch to be removed uh, or not. All of this information, by the way, can be exported to CSV. So you can uh, get an external report and log all of this to work from if you wish. And there's a few other ways in which you can impose patching as well. So it's fully integrated into the base product. It's fully integrated into our endpoint solution console. So if you go to the computers and we could find a particular computer that requires patching, we could come through here and view the available patches instead. Uh, in this instance, there isn't any available. We'll do it a slightly different way. So if I go to view available patches, we can see the devices that need patches. And if we click over here, we also have the same option to view all available patches for this computer or to view all the available patches across of this patch across all computers. So what I was trying to get to before was view available patches for the computer, which will show you all of the patches for a given endpoint. So Win Desktop 10, this is all of the patches that we have available. And again, this list can be exported if we need it to. We do have the option from here to immediately push the patches. Uh, we can cherry pick the ones that we want. We can schedule the installation for a future time if we wanted to. In addition, we have the ability to select again to view all the, the uh, computers that need a particular patch. So SQL Server Management Studio, for example, we could view which computers require this patch. And now we're looking at all the computers that need that particular patch instead. There's another way that we can do this as well. So if we want to create a periodic um, patching policy, then we need to go to tasks. By going through to tasks, we have this new option. So install patches. And by selecting this, you have, an, you have all of the, the requirements that you need to set up a patching policy. So here I'm selecting the target devices. And you can, you can target either a group, so for example, servers, or you could uh, cherry pick individual devices from your uh, your select from your um, client base. Once you've done that, you go back and you choose the date and time in which you wish to install moving forwards, whatever that may be. We can choose how uh, how we want this time to be received. So, for example, in this configuration. Any device which is available within one hour of 4.30 a.m. will actually start the patching process. And we can choose the period in which we wish it to patch, so every week in this case. Then select the criticality of patching and our reboot options at the bottom. Save this policy and it won't immediately be published. So this policy is not yet live until we click the publish. Then that's immediately live and we can, we can uh, assume that all those patches will be applied at the time um, the in question and we can come back here at any point and view the results of that patching policy. We also you'll notice on many pages have the filtering options at the top and this can be really useful uh, when you're trying to find particular computers for which you wish to be patched. So if we come back to the view all patches on the filters here we can actually get quite specific. So we might be looking for laptops or servers that we want to patch. We might be looking just for critical security um, patches. So let's do servers. So here we're looking at security related patching only and I'm going to filter it down. Now we can see all the security related patches for all of our servers and notice how we have third-party applications included here as well. So a security patch like I said isn't always going to be an operating system patch. It could be applications you have installed on the endpoint as well. So this is a really, really quick and easy way for IT administrators to get on top of that headache of making sure that all of the patching is up to date. It gives you the immediate audit of all of the patches that are available and outstanding and an easy way in which you can implement them remotely and immediately over the internet. So how do you implement this? How does this actually work? How do you, how do you get this for your endpoints? I'm going to switch back to uh, another slide for this. And you'll see that I've just got Adaptive Defense 360 up. The reason for this is the implementation 
is easy if you already have one of our core products the flagship of which is Adaptive Defense 360. But even if you don't have 360, if you've got Endpoint Protection or Endpoint Protection Plus, then you already have everything that you need to implement this. In fact, it's already implemented. We use the same agent, so it's a un unified solution. So the Adaptive Defense 360 or Endpoint Protection solution is your core product, and you can add on the patch management for a nominal fee per license, and have access to that part of the console to configure and deploy all of your patching requirements. So it really could not be any easier. Okay, I think that's it. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining.